Our next example here is a convex mirror, which means the mirror now bulges towards the observer. So let's draw an eyeball here representing the observer looking at this. And uh, so that's the back of the mirror, this is the front of the mirror. Convex mirrors have negative focal lengths. So that means that the focal point is behind the mirror and so is the center of curvature. So always remember to put a negative in front of the focal length for convex mirrors. So we now have placed an object quite far away from the mirror at a distance of 100 centimeters in front of the mirror. Where will the image be? Will it be virtual? Will it be real? What's the magnification? And will it be upright or inverted? All right, let's find out. To do that, we're going to draw our rays. The first ray always is parallel to the normal until it hits the mirror. When it hits the mirror, it's going to reflect and it's going to reflect as if it came from the focal point. So when you draw a little dashed line over here, you can see that it will reflect back in this direction like so, ray number one. The second ray needs to be drawn from the object to the focal point, but the focal point is behind the mirror, so we draw a ray that is directed towards the, the focal point, like that. But before we get to the focal point, the mirror interrupts, and of course the ray is then going to reflect back, and it's going to reflect back uh, parallel to the normal line right there. So this is ray number two. And of course, you can see that the reflected rays do not converge, so therefore they do not form a real image. However, the brain here, looking at those two rays converging, interpolates that back, extrapolates that back, and says, oh, this ray comes from back here somewhere, this ray comes back here somewhere, and it will appear to the observer that there's an image right here at this location where the two rays appear to be coming from. So that's the location of the image. And now we're going to find what the position of the image is, and so forth, using our equations. So S prime, S prime standing for the image distance, is equal to SF over S minus F. S is the distance to the object, which was 100 centimeters. The focal length, F, was minus 25 centimeters. And divide that by 100 minus a minus 25. And so this is equal to minus 2,500 over, looks like, uh, 125 which looks like it's uh, minus 20, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Oh, yeah, minus 20. And, of course, that would be centimeters because all the, the distances were given in centimeters. All right, that places the image 20 centimeters behind the mirror, and that looks about right because it's 25 centimeters to the focal point, so S prime equals 20 centimeters. So now we found the location. Negative means that it's behind the mirror, and of course, if the image is behind the mirror, that means it's a virtual image. So I is virtual. Virtual means it's not real. It's just imagined by the brain looking at those rays coming from an apparent point behind the mirror. And then the magnification can be found. M is equal to minus S prime over S. And S prime is, let's see here, S prime, hmm, right there, distance to the image. So minus times a minus 20 centimeters divided by S, which is distance to the object, which is 100. And so that's equal to 1 over 5, a positive 1 over 5. So it means that the image is only one-fifth the size of the object. And since it's positive, that means the image is upright. OK, now, one little caveat there. It's true that the image is upright, but what if the object had been upside down and you have a positive magnification? Of course, then the image will also be upside down. The positive number here simply means that the image is in the same direction as the object. We usually start with a positive object, and therefore, when the magnification is positive, we assume the image to be upright as well. And that's how you do that with a convex mirror.